Welcome to The Brand Called You, where we converse with interesting people to understand the past and predict the future. Today, the brand is Nitin Sait. Nitin is a friend of mine from IIT days. And in the time since IIT, he has worked for some tremendous companies, including McKinsey, Fidelity, Flipkart, and now he runs his own consulting and technology firm called Incedo. We're going to talk about all of that. Welcome to the show, Nitin. Hi, Sandeep. First question, uh, you've worked at some pretty marquee name companies. Tell me one perk that you really enjoyed at any one of these companies. <laughs> um, well, let's start with McKinsey. Uh, I think the great thing about McKinsey was uh, all the travel. Um, and the travel was the opportunity to uh, uh, to experiment with a lot of food. So I'm a I'm a total foodie. Yeah. So there are two segments of you know all the all of humankind can be divided into two segments: those who uh, eat to live and those who live to eat. <laughs> so I'm certainly in the second category. So so I think that travel and and kind of you know enjoying food was probably you know a very interesting thing. But on, on a more serious note. Uh, I think the biggest thing was just the learning opportunity, just learning from people. I think the great thing about working in, starting my career in a firm like McKinsey and then going on to Fidelity and then Flipkart, all of which have really exceptional people, uh, was just the perk of uh, uh, meeting great people and learning from each one of them. Yeah. I, I do remember the days of expense account and eating out uh, and <laughs> consulting. That's always good. It still shows. <laughs> you as well. Uh, so, uh, so one common theme through all these experiences, or most of them, has been uh, that you have been a very early participant in the KPO industry. Uh, you have helped build the knowledge center for McKinsey from very early days. What is the future of this industry? Is everything that is done by humans and brain um, going to be done remotely now? See, I, I, I don't even think this whole thing about KPO and the notion of offshoring and remote is, you know, is a that much of a, uh, you know, specific or, or, you know, necessary definition today. I think 15 years back, 20 years back, you know, when you did it, you know, you know, I did it at McKinsey, a lot of us did it. It was something very important because, you know, breaking barriers and, and kind of, and demonstrating that uh, very sophisticated type of work, knowledge work, research, um, and which was not just about cost efficiency or scale, but which was really about innovation, which was about thought leadership, uh, could be done from India or could be done uh, from an offshore location. I think that's well proven. I think that's well proven. Uh, and I don't think you know you need to prove that anymore. Um, I, I, I think you know what uh, what enterprises are really trying to do is to rec you know are recognizing that that if you have global presence that's a huge opportunity and and the, and the opportunity with global presence is that the talent in different parts of the world is different and in, in India you you may get talent with a certain, you know with a particular set of skills you know analytical skills or whatever you know you go to Poland you know where in McKinsey you know we had set up a very successful knowledge center you get a different type of skills mm -hmm. you go to Belgium uh, you know you go to Brussels and you have a different type of skills and I think that is the future that is what the future is that how do you leverage your global presence. And, and are able to bring different type of talent profiles, each of which are very really unique to that geography, and then kind of string them together to, you know, to build capabilities which any one location will not be able to provide you. So kind of like a supply chain of global talent. That's right. I, it's absolutely a global network. It's a global... Uh, so what is India not very good at? How, where would you put in a country like US and and how do you compare what is good at US versus may not be the best um, thing to do remotely? See, I, see, in India we have not built uh, enough a culture of experimentation, a culture of innovation. 
and and I don't think it gets down. It's not about skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is very much about a mindset, uh, and the difference I find, you know, as I run a business here in the U.S. and as I've built businesses in India, is about um, short term versus long term, and kind of the investment scale and investment horizon. Mm-hmm. In U.S., companies are a lot more assertive, confident about uh, making taking risks. risks about taking risks and have that mindset of trying different things. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas in India, there is still a very, very uh, kind of a short term mentality. So it's very much harvest uh, what you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and therefore, despite the massive, massive uh, presence we have of the IT industry or pretty much the entire, you know, you said KPO, um, KPO industry or the analytics industry, the center of gravity is is very much in India, mm-hmm. but despite that, you know, we haven't been able to push that in terms of thought leadership, in terms of products, in terms of IP. That I think is the big difference, and it is not about skills, and it is very much about mindsets, mindset of the company and the ability to take risk. After all, it's very similar people who are running some of the largest companies Absolutely. here. So, so not about people that the risk taking yeah. appetite yeah. is is the difference. Um, after working at McKinsey, you went to another blue chip, Fidelity, um, and you did a startup as well before that. But I want to talk about your experience of what you did after that, which was Flipkart, a completely different company, uh, in its own right, a, a household name, a huge name, um, and a big change it must have been from the world of buttoned up McKinsey and Fidelity <laughs> to Flipkart. Yeah. What was happening in this company which has become the most valuable uh, startup, uh, storied startup and what was your experience? It's, uh, you know, Flipkart was just uh, a phenomenal experience, very, very intense. Uh, so I characterize it, uh, you know, like driving a Ferrari in the by lanes of Chandni Chowk. <laughs> you know, which you know you would know is like a very very crowded area. It is it is like that. You know, um, e-commerce business is a very is a very high momentum business. Mm. Is a high scale business. Is a speed business. You know, you make decisions, uh, and you know you make product decisions, you make pricing decisions, and next day or you know, in a few hours you can see impact. So it's a very you know it's very high speed, but uh, you have to be very thoughtful about it. Um, so when I joined uh, Flipkart uh, in early 2016, uh, it was quite a, it was a very challenging, those are very challenging times. And, and you moved through the ranks very quickly becoming COO and effectively yeah. running the place for some time. Yes, you know, because when I joined, you know, we were losing cash like, like seven million dollars per month. <laughs> uh, you know, most companies don't raise that much cash in their lifetime. We were losing that in a month. and. Uh, you know, Amazon was jumping on us and, uh, you know, we were, you know, Amazon, you know, we had like this really intense fight, you know, we had taken some strategic decisions which hadn't really gone well. So there was confusion. Um, so uh, but it was also a good opportunity to step in and, um, and to really take charge. Um, and I ended up making some very hard decisions. Uh, I ended up cutting 24, 25% of our costs and like, three, four months, mm-hmm. and therefore I became enemy number one. <laughs> uh, but I think that's what probably saved the company because you know, we were able to um, really get that cash and invest it back into growth. You know, we developed a strategy uh, which was really focused on middle India, which recognized that the growth that was happening was not the metros, not the tier one cities, but was really happening in the tier two, three, four cities. And, and that's where we beat Amazon. Mm-hmm. So very, very, um, uh, very, you know, I remember that very fondly in that, you know, how much, uh, you know, the intensity in that form, you know, how much I was able to accomplish, how much I learned there. Um, but it's not an experience, you know, for the faint hearted. <laughs> how does one deal with a competitor, which is during that period, the most valuable company in the world and is willing to spend a ton of money, I think. They had announced billions of dollars of investment that is going to keep going into the into the country. Did you use any of the McKinsey's framework, consulting framework? How do you deal with a situation which is one of its kind? 
See, it's a, you know, it's to, to battle a giant, mm -hmm. you know, you can't play by the rules. You know, you need to have a very, uh, very, first you need to have confidence. The first you need to have confidence. And I, I still remember, you know, when I joined McKinsey in 1996, you know, and that was the time liberalization had happened, you know, the, one of the prevailing uh, thesis in our office was that you know, eventually all Indian firms will die because all the for, foreign firms will come. They're like initially doing joint ventures, but eventually they would, you know, they would just kill the Indian firms. That never happened. That never happened. And, and that was a big kind of, uh, you know, that, that was a great learning for me. That, you know, you should never be, uh, you know, scared of size. Uh, and it's not just me. I, I think Sachin, Benny, um, you know, really, I think that's something they did very, very well. Uh, there was one value in Flipkart, which I really, really liked, which was audacity, mm -hmm. being audacious. Uh, and I think that's something Sachin, Benny, and some of the early board members, they really, really, uh, that's how they build the company. And, and I think that was a very, it, there was never ever a sense of fear. There was never ever a sense that, uh, oh, it's Amazon. Uh, there was always this self-belief, even at the worst of times, uh, that we can take them down. And, and I think that's just something incredible, that was something incredible about Flipkart. And I think that's just something uh, extremely positive about that generation. Mm -hmm. The generation that built Flipkart is younger than Sandeep our generation, yes. you know, folks in their thirties and, and just the level of fearlessness. And again, this word audacity, I think was the key thing. Very interesting. So, uh, the version where you write a 60 page strategic plan, and think through all the scenarios is not really how e-commerce giants get built. Not at all, you know, not at all. And I think that was our, uh, that was where we got stuck. Mm. Because a business which I think when Sachin and Benny built it and built it in a very clear headed way with some of their um, close friends from my to Delhi, uh, it was very clear headed. You know, you had to get a few things really right. Uh, and, and, you know, and that's what drove the business. And I think there came a point you know, where in kind of trying to now scale up and mature and kind of become world class, I think they somewhere they went away from those quote unquote oh, basic right. basic instincts and tried to become, you know, pick the best of you know Google or Amazon or Facebook or McKinsey and from each of these places you know, we brought very you know a lot of senior talent, including myself. And I I think that confused us. You know, what was really Flipkart? And, you know, we're trying to like pick up like, you know, best of each of these and it just became very confusing. Uh, so going back to the basics and just, you know, few clear things that, okay, you know, what is it that really, who's the customer? What is it that's really driving growth? It's just two categories. Mm -hmm. So you get them right. So, you know, mobiles and apparel, we got those right. You know, we absolutely won those. Amazon won everything else, but because these two were the the giant share of uh, both volume and value, Flipkart won. So, um, so yeah, I think that's that's a, that's very interesting. That battles are not fought, you know, with uh, you know very very sophisticated long uh, playbooks, right? right. Uh, especially when it is a very fast moving, low reaction time type of business. Mm. Um, Let's come to your current role uh, in Cedar, a company that you have um, invested in and are running as CEO now. What is the vision? Yeah. The vision has been in the making for me for a number of years, you know, probably a decade, you know, because I've seen how broadly this kind of business and technology space has been changing. So the key thing that I've seen is that role of technology changing from being a support function to driving the business. Uh, but that's easier said than done. So uh, technology should be a source of competitive advantage for the business, defining the business strategy, but that doesn't happen. There's a big gap. And that is the gap that we are trying to plug. That, you know, how do you use technology, emerging technologies to power a company? 
Yeah. Power a company beyond just being an enabler. It has to come more center stage. What does it mean, power a company? Yeah, so for, no, for me, this is about from strategy to execution. Think of it as, so the company we're trying to build is a McKinsey that executes. Mm. Because where we are, you know, we're the sole intersection of business and technology. And, and today, I think the word that's that we use to kind of describe it is digital or digital transformation. Digital is not just about technology. It is a fundamental different way of thinking about the consumer, your products, the interaction, how you, you your operating model, how you fulfill uh, for the customer and your infrastructure, technology and operations to support that. So all of them have to come together. Um, so so that's, that's the strategy. Now, how do you then, now the big issue today is not just the strategy. I think strategy many have gotten right. But how do you translate that strategy into a reality? Now, now the, what's different in the in the in the digital world is that the traditional boundaries between what and how have blurred. It is it is very much experimentation driven. It is very iterative. Continuous development strategy to execution is a is an iterative cycle, and unless you are able to bring both of these set of capabilities, you will fail. Mm -hmm. And and what. You know, what I saw with digital native, and that's the big thing that I saw at Flipkart, you know, versus, you know, building this at McKinsey and then running uh, digital transformation at Fidelity, that, you know, they were, it was not separate things. Strategy and execution was, were not separate things. It was very much one, you know, what, you know, what digital natives often call product centric mm -hmm. approach. Uh, so that's really what we're trying to build. And how's it going? It is going very, very well. Uh, so it's, um, you know, we are, I'm a little over two years into the journey. Um, I think we've gone through like three phases. The first phase was relatively easy, which was, you know, doing assessing, you know, where we are and where we want to go. Uh, because this whole thought process, the vision had been in, in making for me for quite some time, starting from my time at McKinsey, you know, we had built analytics and, number of new service lines for, for the firm. Uh, so that was an easy part. Um, there was a very tough part, you know, which was, you know, how do you take an existing firm and uh, transform it mm -hmm. to be this new firm that we want to build? That has been a theme with you, huh? You had to step into that with uh, Flipkart when it was transforming to be a professional firm and now you have to do it in Incedo. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I seem to uh, attract those type of situations or gravitate to do, do you have a, a mantra for uh, how do you operate in these situations? See, see it's, uh, it's anybody who says that it's like a formula is kind of kidding himself or kidding the other person that, you know, but, but like th there are four or five um, themes, you know, which, uh, which I have seen work. Um, I think first is that the mandate has to be very clear from the top. Whoever is the decision maker in Flipkart, it was the board. Mm -hmm. uh, in McKinsey, when I was transforming the McKinsey Knowledge Center from a back office into a innovation hub, you know, it for there were like a few senior partners, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who really believed in that concept and sponsored it. And so, uh, you know, that mandate has to be very clear, mm -hmm. and it's not a switch on, switch off. You also have to build it over a period of time. Sure. I think the second thing is that you really, transformation is not easy uh, because what it is really about is that how do you get a virtuous cycle to go? Mm -hmm. um, and for that, you know, you, it is, you know, you need to, you know, that problem solving to zone down on what are the one or two things that you really change, which will get into a virtuous cycle. Uh, that's very important. It is not about... Update. Second is... Get quick wins or second, no? I'll come to that. The, the second is this: the zoning down on the one thing that really matters. Core thing, okay. The core thing. The third is you know what I call the two-speed strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know in today's environment, you know you have to work at multiple speeds. You can't say only just quick wins or so. You need speed one, which is the quick win. Um, but at the same time, you also need to get the big picture right. So you need to have, you know, your, 
the duality or the ability to work with paradoxes or or different type of in this case quick win versus long term i think is very important and the and the final thing i would say you know, there are many things that can be talked about transformation uh, but the one thing i would say is that um um if you want to go far go slow um and because what i've seen is that you know whenever i have tried to hurry up and take a short term view which i think i did when i did my my startup and you know we failed spectacularly you know when i reflect on you know what was different versus you know building out you know what you know i was able to build at at mckinsey uh, and then later on i think the different was the time horizon mm. that you, know, you take like a two year time horizon and if you're trying to really do something big it doesn't happen yeah uh, but if you are able to take like a five year time horizon then you know you can really surprise yourself mm. things so don't change in the short term but they surprise you in the long term and how much you can make an impact that's right great um we're going to change gears talk about within a person first question when i look at your facebook feed i see a ton of selfies <laughs> what is the secret that then why do you take so many selfies <laughs> See, first is just physics. You know, that you know, I have a long reach. <laughs> so uh, I am often the person, the group, you know, who is able to stretch and take a good selfie. But look a little more than that. I, I think this has really happened over the last two years or so. And and this is you know, when you run a global firm, you know, in Cedo, you know, we have like ten locations, and I am able to visit each location, not like every day. You know, you go there once every couple of months. Um, So I found that this was just like a great way of connecting with people. Mm. That you know, you take a selfie with. You know, that's something which is important for them, right? And you put it on Facebook. It's something, uh, you know, which it means something to them. Right. And and now over a period of time, it's kind of become one of those signature moves. Yes. So, yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Um, a common friend of ours. Um, who was at uh, Aravalli IIT at the same time that you and me told me Nitin is everybody's friend. What is the secret? How do you manage to stay in touch with so many people? Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I, well, I think the um, see the heart of it. Uh, see, what also you know, people often say about me is I remember names and I remember like small things about lots of people and 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 I think the key is just about you know interest in people. Mm. Uh, I think that is really the key. You know, if you're interested, you know, then you kind of. Um, Uh, you remember, and, and I think social media really helps. So I use Facebook. I love Facebook, and I you're on it and yeah, connecting with people. Yeah, you know, in the morning you get up and you see birthdays, and you just you know That's drop right. a line. Sure. Yeah, I think it's good. Sure. Social media has made it easy. Um, what's the most fun? These are questions where we just want prompt to know you better. What is the most fun you have had in the last couple of years? An instance. Couple of years. See, I, I think last year. you know we we uh, set up these family days in our office so each of our locations in india you know we did this kind of big you know family day where we invited families of our employees and they like really big performances it was like a big indian wedding mm. um so i really enjoyed that it was an you know, opportunity to dance a lot <laughs> so i loved doing that but it was also seeing uh, our our employees happy and and their family is happy um i think that's one of the the big joys of building a business okay. you know it makes you know all the pain worth it you know that you see young people happy having a good time so, yeah what has been your biggest failure personal and what has been your learning from it so all failures uh, but i i think the most uh, perhaps the biggest was my startup active karma um happened early on in my career um and um uh, you know we you know we did this uh, startup with couple of my friends and we also friends at IIT Delhi some of them were at McKinsey so it was really really a a plus plus team and we failed spectacularly um so, and i think that was that was something you know everybody expected that you know this team is going to do amazing things and we failed and and i think that was a huge huge learning and the learning was see I, i talked about earlier i think just the pacing oneself pacing. and and just you know giving yourself time i think we were over ambitious i think we 
but trying to do too many things in too short a time. And he didn't realize that we were not in McKinsey. Mm. And then those things did not happen at the pace or when the external environment changed. Mm. That was also when the dot-com boom turned into dot-com bust. Mm. Uh, I think we were mentally, we were mentally not prepared to deal with it. Mm. Okay, that's that's uh, insightful, uh, and it's great that you took the lemon and made lemonade. You have had <laughs> a phenomenal success since then. Uh, some rapid fire questions. Okay, Katrina or Angelina? Angelina. Parathas or pancake? Very certainly parathas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, a night in Times Square on New Year's or a beach vacation in Hawaii? Beach vacation for sure. And uh, last one, prestige or growth? It's a bit of a trick question. Uh, I'll answer growth, but it depends on the definition of prestige. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Last, uh, very last question. There is a brand called Nitin Say. You've been around, you've been... Uh, you received many awards, you've received a lot of recognition, but in few, as few words as possible, what is the brand of Nitin? I think it's about um, authentic, inspiring, transformational leader. Uh, I think transformation has been a big theme across my career and I think that's what I stand for, uh, taking on difficult tasks. Uh, and making making a difference, uh, and in that I think it's about energy, passion, um, stretching people, um, building a team, uh, and I think most importantly integrity. Authentic, inspirational, transformational, and um, last one was integrity. Integrity. Thank you so much, Nitin. We have to come back, and you got to tell us more about. Uh, uh, your blog, Nitin Fundas, and so many other things to talk about. But thank you so much for making the Thanks, time. Thanks, Sandeep. I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You podcast. Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes, and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Simply search for the brand called you. Thank you and see you next week.